Corporations Managing Director and CIO, Damon Vickers and Company from my hometown, the Emerald City, Seattle, Washington. Damon, good evening to you. So the markets took it all in stride, actually. Good for New York. I'm kind of wondering what happened there. But, you know, the theme I notice is that as stocks were down at the open and through much of the morning session, the bargain buyers emerged from the woodwork. This is, becoming a re this is be a repeating itself quite a bit. It has been. I mean, Bernie, the U.S. markets are, are strong. You know in, in every interview that you and I have done together year to date that we said the markets were going to go significantly higher. None of that has changed. Uh, we put a target at 16,200 on the Dow. Um, all of that is in place. I think we're going to hit the 16 too. And I'll even go so far as to say that over the next several years, I think we're heading up towards 22, 23,000. Um, so the U.S. market's extremely strong, and even though seemingly the rally in the U.S. has extended, it's really not. Right. This thing is only three months old, so we've got a wow. lot more to go. Okay. Aren't you ignoring the fact, though, that there's an increasing chorus? I mean, the fact that they're talking so much, and I, it's, it's kind of boring me to tears, but all these governors in the Federal Reserve, are or presidents in the Federal Reserve, and the governors, too, uh, are talking about, oh, when should we do this? When are we going to pull the plug? When are we going to dial it back? And, uh, and, and all that. And, you've got to, and, and in Japan, everybody's worried that this Abenomics thing could start to backfire a little bit. It's like a banana in the tailpipe. If you look at what the Japanese government bond yields are doing, it might kind of derail the whole thing. Are you ignoring all these factors? Well, what you're talking about is, is noise. Am I going to pay attention to noise and the chatter of opinions, uh, or am I going to pay attention to what's happening from a price standpoint? The news is going to come and go. Opinions are going to come and go. Uh, but price is self-evident, and the markets have emerged out of a 13-year slump, and the U.S. markets look poised continually to move significantly higher. I'll throw you one in there that no one has even begun to talk about it, but I'm going to talk about it right now, and that is the U.S. banking sector. The banks, a number of them, not all of them, because they're not all equal, but the banks are about to emerge from their ranginess, and that only tells me that the profits and the earnings of a number of key U.S. banks are likely to rise significantly over the next six months to a year, and that may provide even more further tailwind to the U.S. economy and the U.S. markets. Yeah, and you've been big on the banks for some time. You've got Wells Fargo, Culver City, California, U.S. Bank, PNC uh, as well. What are going to be the drivers of growth uh, for the banks? Or is there going to be a sudden demand for credit, or uh, where, where is this going to come from? What's the catalyst, Damon? Well, I, I think for sure, if, if, you're looking, if, if you're looking to buy a house, which you should, you better get moving, or any of those things, rates are low, you should be borrowing money. Borrow money when it's low. Money is low. Money is cheap. Borrow the money. This is a good time. It's been a good time. It continues to be a good time. Wells Fargo, we, we own. Um, that's moving higher for us. PNC, I think, is about to emerge. Hasn't quite yet. I'm going to wait. Um, also, I would say the same thing with U.S. Bank Corp. That's another one we have our eyes on. Culver, we don't have any position at all in. But um, these banks are looking positive. Wells Fargo is looking great. Citibank isn't. Uh, J.P. Morgan isn't. Bank America isn't. AIG isn't. Uh, and those shouldn't be touched. And I, I'm astonished that some of the largest hedge fund managers in the United States, I'm talking about the big guys, that they're wasting investment dollars in trying to pick bottoms on Citigroup and the like. I think it's insane. I, I, I can't ponder the intelligence of what they're doing. I, I don't. What else? David, what, what about outside the, uh, the U.S. financial space? I mean, there's been some, there have been some shake-ups. Uh, let's talk about the consumer and just take one part, uh, particular example for no uh, other reason than the fact that uh, McDonald over at P&G has been under fire for a long time because of failure to meet the metrics that some of their competitors, like Colgate Palmolive in the consumer uh, product space, have been uh, enjoying. They just changed. He's out. And uh, Lapley is in over at Procter & Gamble. What about names like that? What about corporate shakeups to extract more value from the companies? Is P&G something you talk about? Anything you touch? P&G is a nice one. I mean, uh, we saw it, and I saw P&G emerge out of its ranginess, and we, we didn't buy it because we didn't like the size of it. Year-to-date, larger caps, 
uh, generally, with, with some exceptions, some large caps have done fantastic, but generally your, your smaller caps, your Russell, has done a little bit better on a percentage basis than your larger companies. And we got a, we really, we started moving more to that 5 to 30 billion, 15 billion sweet spot in the market. And we just thought PG was too big for us. Um, you know, do you get anywhere by changing the guard? Do you get anywhere by changing the guard at the helm of companies? Um, let's start with Tim Cook. <laughs> Time to go. You want to change? <laughs> Sorry. You want to change him? I mean, he's like the he's like the well, the, I think the, the, the lead the lead general in front of people like Carl Levin who are attacking them on taxes. You need him at the front right now. Yeah, no, I don't think there are many willing followers, actually. But I do think there might be an opening over at, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, Hewlett Packard or Dell that he might just really fit in really well over there. Uh, Apple Computer needs a genius. Maybe Jonathan Ives, mm -hmm. maybe somebody, somebody who's a little crazy. And I just don't think he, he has that. Nice man, God bless him, but I don't think he has it. Hey, let's talk about what's been happening in Japan in the last 24 hours. That's a serious yeah. deal. Um, I, yeah. I like it that we're getting this rally today. Um, I don't necessarily think that the Japanese rally is over with, but we're probably going to pause in here. My guess is that pause is going to do very nicely for the U.S. markets tomorrow. We'll probably see a nice rally. Um, uh, Japan still has that history of price to deal with. You know, mm -hmm. the Japan market was in a bear market for, you know, 20 plus years. Can they climb yeah. out of it? And here's the biggest question than that. China mm -hmm. beginning to slow down. How do you create the never ending wave of economic growth and prosperity so that you don't enter into deflation like China is entering into now? There's the question. Yep. It's a huge juggernaut. 64 quadrillion renminbi question. Hey, Damon, I'll see you in uh, four weeks, okay? Back to the Emerald City myself. We'll hang out uh, down at uh, Ivers or something. Damon Vickers.